<laughs> so ladies, first of all, thanks so much for coming and chatting to us. It's been a really sad week this week and everybody's talking about it. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who can't understand why someone in a position who seems to have everything could take their own life. But you know what it's like. You know what it's like to have everyone looking at you, everybody talking about you. What are the pressures like when you come out of a show like Love Island in reality? It is really, really difficult because you've been given this amazing platform and you've had like the most amazing time. It's like you're never going to experience that anywhere else other than on this reality show with all your friends. You're on such a high when you leave and then to come out and be bombarded with everyone's opinions on like whatever you do, a relationship, what you're wearing, what you look like, is a lot to cope with. And I think for me, it's like... We are so grateful for this platform, but then at the same time, that adds pressure because people are thinking, oh, my God, what have they got to be sad about? Yeah, so definitely. Like... I think it's hard when people think, oh, well, they have got everything. Yeah. Um, that when something bad happens that you think, well, why when you've got this perfect life that loads of people would give a right arm for but actually at the end of the day we are all normal people we were all normal people before we went on the show yeah. uh, it's just i don't think people can get their head around it sometimes yeah and i think people think because we've got a blue tear can been on the show and got loads of followers that what they say won't affect us when really it's like the opposite we're still human it's still not nice to read negative comments about yourself um, do you think it's healthy then for people, as you say, to realise that you are human and that there is no such thing as a perfect life? Because there are a lot of young people out there who watch the show and think, that's what I want, I want to be big on Instagram, I want to go on Love Island. What would you say to them to say, actually, you know, it, it's not... Yeah, definitely. It's not as perfect as people imagine. Yeah, I think, like, people don't realise that what they're saying, maybe over social media, to say the likes of us, it is affecting us, like we are normal people. I always think like, would they say that to someone that they necessarily were friends with or worked with or someone they knew that lived in their hometown? I think they think because we were seen on TV that we don't have these emotions like everybody else. So true, yeah. And obviously you guys were on last year's show, so you are still the most recent crop of, of contestants. Do you think it's hard when another year has passed by? So for someone like Mike, who was from 2017, um, is it hard when the focus shifts onto, onto next year's contestants? That must be difficult, I imagine. Obviously, you've still got that to come. Probably, yeah. And I think as well, because the press say it, you hear it from all different people, this is your year before next Love Island has come, so you've got to make an impact now. So I guess it is, again, another aspect of pressure on us young people to, like, be really successful in this, like, one year before the next, like you say, crop of Love Island has come about. Yeah, maybe it's probably down to us as well to not be naive going into it and thinking this is going to last 10, 20 years and maybe to think, well, while things are good at the moment and you're working all the time just to take all the opportunities that you can, that you're given and make the most of what you've got now, because maybe it isn't going to last forever. Yeah, I don't know about you, but when I went in, I thought even if I'm here for a few days, it's the experience, just enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, I enjoyed my life before I went on Love I was happy. I was only in there, obviously, the first week, and I thought I was going straight back to work. I worked in a shoe shop. I was completely normal, so I thought I'd just go back to work, and obviously it didn't turn out like that, but, yeah, I would have been happy to have gone back to my normal life before that. Is there the sense, though, I mean, as you say, you've got to make the, the, of the most of the opportunity while it's there. Do you get that feeling of, oh, my goodness, the clock's ticking, I've got to get as much out of this as I can? For me, a little bit, but I think it's my nature anyway. I'm a competitive person. Whatever I've done, I try and do the best I can at it. So I think it's different for different people. Yeah. Yeah, I think I went on there solely looking for love, actually. I think I was maybe a little <laughs> bit naive <laughs> when I first went in. Um, so anything that I got afterwards for me was just a bonus. Brilliant. Um, and tell me about the, the actual crew, because they've had a tough week as well. You know, a lot of people have pointed the finger saying it's your fault, whatever. Um, how have you found the support that you've had? What kind of support have they given you before and afterwards? For me, it's been really good. Like, before we met with psychologists and would have different tests and stuff, and I was very honest and open the fact I did suffer, like, mental health. I have been, like, really anxious. I'm not the most confident person. And they've been so supportive. Even times we would have to do different challenges and I'd really like take it to heart. Like there's like, if you want to speak to the therapist on site, you can do that. It's totally up to you. So for me, I've had a really good experience. But I think when something bad like this happens, everyone's quick to find someone to blame. 
But for me, ITV have been amazing and done everything they can. Yeah, they really have. I think people have this impression that maybe you just fill in a form to get on ITV, uh, to get on Love Island, and that's it. Mm. Um, you don't just fill in a form and you're on the show. So many checks are done beforehand. I mean, they look into your doctor's history. Um, I mean, they look into your medical history. They talk to you about your family history, um, mental and physical health problems. Um, so literally everything is looked into in depth. It's not just like, right, we like her, let's put her on this show. Yeah, that's good to happens. hear. That's really good to yeah, hear. Yeah, and for me, I've gone through a lot after coming out, like I was burgled and then I broke up with my ex. So I think things like that, the producers are always the first on my phone to be like, if you need any help, we're here, come and have a chat with us. It's not like you've gone on the show, you've done your bit and they leave you to your devices. They're constantly there. Yeah, also I made really good friends with them as well. I have yeah. like a few of them on social media. Like I do just message them whenever I want. Um, so they, they, they are there for us. Yeah. And obviously today they've said that they're going to be doing even more they are going to proactively check on people rather than the onus being on the contestants to come and ask for help if they need it. They are going to be there with that follow-up care even more. Is that a positive step, do you think? Yeah, definitely. It's really good. Yeah, 100%. I think a lot of people have maybe put in the blame a lot onto um, the producers and I don't think it's very fair um, because they do so much behind the scenes that people don't actually see. You have got 24 hour care on that show before, during and after. So it's just a shame that they're getting a bit of a stick stiff. for that, yeah. Um, and how are you? Because you have had a hard time, you know, and I think you particularly have taken more flack than most. <laughs> how have you handled that and how are you, and how are you feeling? And are you going to get back together with Wes? <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. But no, it was overwhelming to come out. I knew I wasn't naive, I knew people wouldn't agree with my career choices, the way I acted on the show and things like that. So I expected a little bit of stick, but for me, the hardest thing was how people spoke about my appearance and choices I've made with my body. And I just thought it is hard to deal with, but as soon as we finished the final, I was taken into a room with like a press officer. They told me all these stories. So I was prepped and I was ready to go out. So yeah, it's all been good. And your family, I imagine, have been really supportive. You really Yeah, close to exactly. Family. It's not just up to ITV as a whole and producers. I think you've got to have the whole network around you, your friends, your family. Yeah, definitely. Friends, family, even uh, our management team, like they've been amazing. They give you the support as well that when you're out there, what uh, steps to take next, like even things down to financially. I know that they um, released ITV had released a statement about giving you support, finan like financial advice and things like that when you get out. And I just think a lot of that should be down to like your management team as well, giving you the advice that when you do get out, you've got all the knowledge that you need. Yeah, definitely. And we had like social media training when we come out, did you? Uh, well? Yeah, when I first came out as well, I was greeted by the two producers and the psych. I wasn't left on my own. I think people <laughs> think you're just put on a plane back to the UK. I had, um, I had a chaperone from ITV with me for five days when I first got back to the UK. I wasn't on my own for the first five days. People need to see us as human rather than, oh, you've been given this amazing opportunity, you should be grateful. Because mm -hmm. no matter if you've got thousands of pounds in the bank, whether you're having, I don't know, whether you're like a film star, A-list or whatever it is, people still have struggles that no one knows about and it is, Especially for men, I think men find it hard because of the whole like tradition of, oh, you should be manly, just man up. I hate that phrase. I think we just all need to be kinder to each other. I think when people watch a programme like Love Island, they think they know somebody. They think, mm. oh, we know that person. So when they come over and maybe they meet you and they're like, oh, they talk to you as if they know you. Um, I think it's hard to um, maybe switch off from that as a member of the public and be like, actually, they are real normal people, they have emotions like us, um, so it's nice to just be treated normally like everybody else.